Before we start discussing the computational methods to study fluid dynamics, I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page and remembers the differential form of the fluid equation. So this is going to be a review on the derivation of the basic uh, differential equations of fluid mechanics, the equation of conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. So let's start with the conservation of mass. Of course, you know that mass is a quantity that is conserved. Conserved mass is not lost or destroyed. Uh, and therefore, for a system, a system being a identifiable group of matter in the fluid, we can agree that the change with respect to time of the mass of the system has to be equal to zero. Mass does not change. Now, we use in fluid mechanics something that's called the Reynolds transport theorem, which allows us to write um, equations um, for a control volume. I'm not going to um, um, go over the Reynolds transport theorem, but just remind you that that allows us to write the equation of conservation of mass for a control volume. I'm going to abbreviate control volume by CV uh, in the form of integral form. We have the partial derivative with respect to time of the sum of the mass in the control volume, which is the integral in the control volume of rho dv, where rho is the density, dv is an infinitesimal volume element. So this is the change. Um, this represents the rate at which the mass in the control volume changes. So the rate of change of mass in the control volume. And this plus the flux across the control surfaces has to be equal to zero for the mass to be conserved. So the second term is the integral across the control surfaces of the flux of mass, which is rho, the density, times v, the velocity of the fluid, dot product with the outward normal, times a differential of area. The sum of these two integrals has to be equal to zero, where the second integral represents the net rate at which mass is flowing. across the control surfaces. OK, so we have the equation of conservation of mass for a system of control and a control volume. So now we want to write the differential form of the conservation of mass, which is the equation that we're going to use in CFD, the differential form of the continuity equation. So first, we're going to consider, consider a small fluid element, a small element of fluid of size dx by dy by dz. Um, so the first term, the first term of the equation here, the continuity equation for a controlled volume. We can immediately write for an infinitesimal volume of fluid as simply the partial derivative with respect to time of the density times the differential um, of volume, which is dx dy dz. Basically, here we assume that rho is uniform. Uh, uniform in the differential of volume because the differential of volume is very small. The element is very small. So rho is uniform, and we write the first term. So now we want to write the second term. The second term is the rate of mass flow, this second term in the continuity equation. For this term, the rate of mass flow 
We're going to imagine a little cube, a different differential of volume of the fluid, and look at the uh, flow rate across this little cube. So let's consider first the x direction. So we have a little cube here. which is very small. I've drawn it rather big, but imagine it's very, very small. And in the center of this cube, the density is equal to rho. Okay, the, therefore, the flow of mass out of this phase here, we can obtain using a Taylor series expansion of the quantity rho u, the quantity rho u coming from our second, in the x duration we have the quantity rho u inside the integral. So rho u is the x component, the x component of the mass flow rate. And doing a Taylor expansion, a Taylor expansion of this quantity rho u, we see that the flux out of this little cube towards the right is going to be equal to rho u plus the variation of rho u with respect to x, which is d dx of rho u times the distance between this point in the center of the cube and the face on the right, which is dx over 2, where this distance here is the x and times the area dy dz where this is um, dy and the height of the box is dz. So this is the area of this face over here dy dz. Now the flux of mass coming in the left phase similarly is going to be equal to rho u minus the variation d dx of the quantity rho u times the distance between the face and the center point where the density is rho, which is dx over 2, multiplied by the area again of this face, which is dy dz. So, we have the mass, the mass coming in the left, the mass coming out of the right, and therefore the net rate of mass outflow in the x direction is equal to, well, the, I can subtract these two terms, and if I subtract the term in the right and the term in the left, I obtain, of course, the term rho u itself cancels out, and I'm only left with ddx of rho u times dx by subtracting these two terms in the left and the right, the one half goes away, and multiplied by dy and dz. So this is our net rate of mass outflow in the x direction. Similarly, we can get the other two directions. And so in the y direction, the net rate of mass outflow is going to be d dy of the quantity rho v, which represents the um, y component of the mass flow rate per unit area, 
times dx, dy, dz. And in the z direction, we will have the net rate of mass outflow in z direction is equal to d, dz of rho w times dx, dy, dz. And therefore, the net rate of mass outflow is the sum of these three terms. The sum of these three, then, is the net rate of mass outflow, which represents the second integral, number two, the second integral in the equation of conservation of mass for a control volume. So now I can add little one here with little two here, and I have the differential equation for conservation of mass, which is going to be then d rho dt from the first equation plus d dx of rho u plus d dy of rho v plus d dz of rho w, and all of this equal to zero. Or in vector notation, we have the rho dt plus the del operator dot product with rho v, the velocity of the fluid, equal to zero. Of course, in this equation here, I have divided by the volume dx dy dz. So this is finally our differential form for the continuity equation. You can see, of course, that if the flow is steady, the first term, d rho dt, is going to be equal to zero, and in steady flow, you only have that the divergence of the velocity is equal to zero.